Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 325. Our lesson title today is Current Realities End. What do we mean by <coughs> current realities end? Well, we've been talking about a judgment that's going to be pronounced against this world, the whole human race. Turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 30. The world, for the first time in modern times, is going to hear the voice of God. And the voice that they hear is going to be the voice of judgment, making a pronouncement upon sin and rebellion about the corrupted condition of the human race and the things which will fall out as a result. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Therefore I prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, he shall give a shout, as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. So everybody, man, woman, child, animal, vegetable, Everything is going to hear the voice of the Creator at this time. When he makes his pronouncement, when he makes his judgment, immediately things are going to be set in motion that are going to radically change all things. <clears throat> We're going to take a look briefly recapitulating what we had done before about these changes. <clears throat> Turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter. He speaks, actually he shouts, and immediately what he has shouted sets things in motion on the earth. Matthew 24 starting at verse 7 For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom there should be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. What does this mean? This means that on a global scale, <coughs> evil is going to go forth, initiating all those who are occupied in any form of aggression to turn on each other. This talks about... <coughs> Those who are armed, <clears throat> those who have intentions of harming, are going to turn on themselves, their fellows that have the same intention. Everybody across the board, armies are going to turn on armies, civilians are going to turn on civilians. It's going to be a wave of vitriolic aggression which will consume all those that have engaged in aggressive acts. Turn to Ezekiel, 32nd chapter. We covered this <clears throat> briefly before. <coughs> those that have purposed in themselves destruction of others are themselves going to be destroyed. 
we see <coughs> it'll be a time in which the nations are arrayed against Israel to destroy her. And their <coughs> destructive intense motivation is going to come on themselves. They themselves are going to be destroyed, cast literally bodily into the torment regions of hell. Ezekiel 32, verse 18. The Son of Man wailed for the multitude of Egypt, cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, into the neither parts of the earth. With them they go down to the pit. It's talking about a judgment where God cast down those that are arrayed at this point to go and attack Israel and destroy her. Now, we briefly recapitulated this. We, we're going to take a look at the people that are talking about. Verse 22, Asher is there with all her company. We said that this deals with the people who are in the region of Syria, <coughs> uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan. And it goes on <coughs> to name um, others, Elam, the people of Iran, Meshach, Tubal, this is uh, the Slavic people of Russia, Eastern Europe, it goes on down, Edom, and her kings, Edom are the, the nations to the south of Israel, Jordan, <coughs> the uh, Hashemites, and the uh, gathered people, the Palestinians, the gathered people around there, the Zidonians, and descendants of, uh, that's Hezbollah, and Lebanon, those to the north of Israel, all of these, they're going to fight against themselves, destroy themselves, be cast into hell as a result of the judgment pronounced by God in the person of Jesus Christ. Now having said that, we note that the judgment is against the whole human race. And in this respect, man is going to lose custody of the surface world which was given to him after the flood. He is going to become <clears throat> a victim of fallen intelligences that uh, formerly were imprisoned in the heart of the earth that will be released to dominate the surface world. Turn to Ezekiel 7. Ezekiel 7. Talks about the earth being a, a paradise. Basically, when it was given to man, it was cleansed purified and man defiled it. Ezekiel 7 verses 20 to 21. That's for the beauty of his ornament. He said it in majesty. So, talk of course about YHVH giving the covenant to Noah and his sons who represent the human race to go out, cultivate the earth, keep it up. He said it in majesty, but they made the images of the abominations and of the detestable things therein. Therefore, I have set it far from them. Man's going to lose custodianship of the earth, the surface world. 
Notice what it says in verse 21. I will give it into the hands of the strangers. In the Hebrew, the word strangers there is literally alien. <clears throat> for prey and to the wicked of the earth for spoil and they shall pollute it. So, the earth is going to be taken out of the hands of Adamic man, the Adamic race, and restored into the races that formerly dominated it. This constitutes what we call reality shift, reality change. Man's reality, <clears throat> the things that were prepared so that the human race could endure and uh, be comfortable in this world, to develop it, <clears throat> are radically going to change to a reality that's conformable to individuals, beings that are not of the human race. Just for those who may not yet know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. when you describe the strangers, we understand them to be non-human, therefore let's call them the nations. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what some of these nations might look like so people can get a better understanding of what you mean? Turn to Genesis, third chapter. I didn't mean to turn you off, but I'm sorry. It's okay. That's all right. I'm glad you asked. Well, just a brief synopsis here. Let me go back to where we were. This is third chapter. <coughs> Verse 15. <clears throat> Here's the Lord talking to Adam after he sins, about the judgment that's going to come on him. Now for enmity, hatred, variance, strife between thee and the woman, <clears throat> and between thy seed and in her seed. This is talking about strife ultimately dealing with the human race and the races apart from the human race, the serpent races under Lucifer. They basically are the ones that are going to be given custody of the earth. You have the fallen angelic hierarchy Thrones, dominions, principalities, cherubim. You have the serpent races that are currently in vogue. The giants. Uh, people that aren't willing to stay in denial see this happening already with the UFO activity, with the onset of the <clears throat> cryptid creatures that are being seen all over the place. This is, this is all you got to do is look. Sure. And you can see the onset of this taking right. place. And these are the nations. Yeah. Part of them. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> they will be given dominion over the earth. Turn to Daniel, 7th chapter. They're going to set up... <clears throat> A society, a global society, dealing with an empire of non-humans that will dominate all things. Daniel 7, verse 23. <coughs> Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Now this says upon the earth. It's going to come from the subterranean region, dominate the surface world. Which shall be diverse. The word diverse is altered, changed <coughs> from all, A-L-L, -L, all kingdoms. It shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it in pieces. What is being said here, this kingdom 
is going to usher in a totally different reality than we are used to seeing. And this reality will envelop the entire earth, shifting and changing the former Adamic reality into something that the human race is not prepared for. It will <coughs> rise from the subterranean. It will change the reality of the Adamic race, alter it, and then it will <coughs> tread down. It's going to destroy the Adamic civilization, wipe it out totally, it will obliterate it. As that is uh, rendered by the word devour the whole earth and uh, <clears throat> tread it down break it in pieces what does it mean section it it means that <clears throat> these individuals are going to section the surface world among themselves and rule over it until the time of the coming of the Lord now <clears throat> We see this illustrated in Daniel. Turn to Daniel, the second chapter. Verse 43, 44. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. So you have two substances here. Iron, which is a superior, and durable, <coughs> dominant element. Mixed with miry clay. Malleable, uh, very easily damaged. They... So we see the word, the pronoun they. So the, both substances are symbolizing individual intelligences. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So we see that the clay represents mankind, the human race. The, the iron represents the superior intelligences that are going to dominate. They're going to mix themselves. They're going to come up and divide the earth among themselves. The human race is going to abide in their shadow. Notice what it goes on to say. Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed, descendants, of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, so the iron represent kings, rulers, dominions, who are going to dominate the human race until the coming of the Lord. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So here we have a brief introduction into the judgment that's to come and its effect. Now, having said that, we want to go into this a little further. <clears throat> Scripture indicates this judgment will suddenly fall upon all individuals and groups on the face of the earth. Turn to the Gospel of Luke 21, verse 35. Luke 21, verse 35. For as a snare, a net, a trap, 
shall it come on all, all, A-L-L, all that dwell on the face of the whole earth. The whole human race is going to be caught up in this. <clears throat> and he's warning to be aware. Now, as this is happening, we said it deals with everybody who is actively engaged in something that is open rebellion against God, aggressive, evil, the judge is going to immediately fall on them. As the judgment is falling, the fourth empire is going to be released. Turn back to Matthew 24. Excuse me, no, no. We're staying, going to stay in Luke. Luke 21, verse 11. Luke 21, verse 11. Right where you were. A great earthquakes. The word earthquakes is mega seismos. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs. The word great signs there in the heap in the original Greek is terrors from the heavens. This is the rise of the fourth empire sectioning the earth causing tremendous alteration in the former Adamic order. It's giving an understanding of great island kingdoms coming up, <coughs> land being displaced, the whole world going into convulsions, the skies going into convulsions. Man has no concept of the picture that the scripture is painting here about this judgment. It's going to render everything in man's memory null and void. The, the Gospels here give us a, a brief view of what the human race is going to be dealing with. In verse 11, it talks about fearful sights. Man is going to be in consistent terror about the things that are coming forth from the heavens because the heavens are going to be opened in a way in which they were never opened before. Turn to Isaiah, 24th chapter, verse 17 to 18. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon the O inhabitant of the earth. It's talking about the whole human race. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear. Now, why is he talking about fear? Why is he, he because he can't define the the actual being condition that is being faced here. It goes beyond human description. All he can define is the effect that it has. The human race is going to be terrified, scared to death by confronting things they didn't believe existed. They're coming out of the earth and out of the heavens. A question that someone might ask is how is it in the torment regions? that the rich man who is talking to Abraham, asking Lazarus to dip his tongue so he can call his... How does he have the presence of mind to have that discussion whilst he's being tormented to the degree that you've just described? Well, the reason in that respect is the torment is of a, a such a nature that he feels he's going to pull himself together to try to mitigate the torment by asking for this water. 
it, it, it's not something that's coming easy to him. Right. But he feels if he can get it, it's worth the, right. the effort. So it's more of a psychological issue than anything else because that one drop of water really is not going to do anything for him at all. Well, in his mind, that's, yeah. that's what it would take. Yeah. But getting back to this, that's just a, a, a brief granule of the mindset <laughs> of the human race at this point. Isaiah 24, 17 to 18, Fear in the pit and the snare upon the inhabitant of earth, and it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from on high are open. The foundations of the earth do shake. The windows from on high. These are openings in which before nothing happened. When a window or a door in the heaven is open, it means that something's going to pass through. The last time the windows of heaven were open, the flood came down and wiped out everything. At this point in time, the windows are going to be open and things are going to consistently come through, terrorizing the human race. Turn back to Luke 21. Are you going to describe these things? Uh, well, I'm going to give an overall okay. comment. Uh, yes. So from the time the judgment is pronounced, it's going to be consistent terror on mankind. Luke 21, 26. Luke 21, 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. It's going to be consistent intense intensification of the terror that are coming down from the heavens. Now, what I want to say here, this has to do with those under the judgment. Those who are serving the Lord are not going to be under the judgment. <clears throat> those who heed the warning, turn, you're in Luke 21, we want verse 35 and 36 again. For as the snare shall have come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape, to escape, to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Those who are accounted worthy will not experience what the majority of the human race is, the terror that they're going to experience. It's going to be totally different. God as a full plate for the individual who is prepared for this and is totally committed to him. Matthew 24. While others are enduring the terrors and the frightful situation that's taking place here, the committed saint is going to be sharing a reality in which he is covered, in which he is performing a calling. Matthew 24, verse 44, 46. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then? is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. That is the saint that feels 
the importance of taking God's Word and teaching God's Word to God's people because he's been called to do that <laughs> that person blessed is he that that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing what does that mean that means while all this horror is taking place those who are the wise servants who prepared themselves will not be experiencing the things that these individuals under the judgment are going to be experiencing they are going to be free to serve and to uh, uh, um, give meat to God's sheep feeding them they'll be feeding the flock when the Lord returns and he'll be so pleased that blessing will flow upon them it says verily I say unto you he shall make him ruler over all his goods now two things we said that the terrors are going to fall on those under the judgment the blessings are going to fall on those that are not under the judgment turn to James first chapter verse 17 what happens when these windows are open things come through two groups of things terrors and blessings James the first chapter right after Hebrews We'll be closing with this. When you get to James, the first chapter, we want verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, those that are in Christ that are committed are already receiving blessings from the heavens. Amen. Colossians, third chapter, verse 1 and 2, will tell you the earth gives you nothing. You're disconnected from the earth if you're in Christ. You lose all your earthly identity. Therefore, you become a son of God and an heir of the blessings of God which are resident in the heavens. So when the windows open up and egregious conditions are falling on those under the judgment, blessings are going to be coming on that servant that's busy feeding his Lord, his Lord's pastor, his Lord's flock. It's a win-win situation. Now, people can be in denial all they want. They could be looking for the rapture all they want ain't happening yet what is happening is a judgment and the Lord is going to gather the faithful unto himself before the rapture takes place